Okay, we're going to start our second uh, week of uh, Revit, and uh, one of the things we found last year was that the um, uh, plotter function in Revit doesn't have a PDF writer. So what I'd like you to do is go to www.cutepdf.com. I don't know where they get the name from, but there's a free download here, just the Cute PDF writer, and I want you to download this. And then I'm going to go through the installation. I don't have it on my laptop here now, so I'm going to go through the installation with you. So once you've downloaded it, I'll go ahead and close out of this. Again, it's www.cutepdf.com. Close it out. And there's my program, Cute Writer EXE. I, I have an Adobe PDF Writer on my machine, so if you have one, it's fine. But if you don't, let's go ahead and install this one. And I wanted to install it with you because there's a couple things you need to be concerned about when you do this. So we'll accept the agreement. Hit next. And a lot of these pieces of free software are, are good, and, but they try to download things that you really don't want on the system. Hopefully that's thinking about it. Bear with us. I'm going to give it a few seconds here to make sure it does come up. doing something so bear with us I can hear my hard drive going so I know it's uh... it's not that big a file Let me out now. I'll accept it again. Install. There we go. Seems to be doing something now. Must use the converter. Would you like to set up program to download and install the free converter? Yes. You want to hit yes on this. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. My internet at home here has been a little slow. We've got some ice on the trees, and I think my antenna is a little off base, but it's moving, so. Of course, once you get the video, you can kind of thumb through this. When you see it getting towards the end, then you can stop it and, and hit play again. I suppose I could cut it out, too, but that would be... So 
So we are going to continue with our drawing that we started last week. Um, today we're going to put some windows in that front wall and then we're going to work on our title block getting that ready for next week. So what can you have 108%? Yeah, I would have set this up ahead of time, but there's a couple things I wanted you to be aware of when you install it so you don't end up getting some extra software on your computers. Yeah, we don't want this. At least I don't want it. To... The editor? No. Nope. Apple software update. I don't think so. Well, I think I went through this run once, but we'll see what happens here. I really don't want the editor. Let me just see what happened if I have a devices and printers. Cute PDF writer right there. Because mine, when I installed it at, at work, it came up. I wanted to install a couple of things on my Chrome that I didn't really want. So maybe it was just while I was downloading it. I'll just make sure. No, nope, seems to be okay. So we're going to go ahead and open up our Revit 2016 and we're going to open up the drawing that we had started um, last week with the, the massing exercise in Chapter 2. We're going to continue in Chapter 2 starting on page 2-29. I'm still here. particularly slow tonight so I'll blame it on my internet checking my license
I guess I should have had Revit running. But that would have just slowed everything else down, so there we go. Patience is a virtue. Fortunately, once it's up, it seems to run pretty smooth. So I'm going to maximize the screen. I'm going to go ahead and open up the file from my uh, home CIE 101. Uh, so go to my desktop. CI 101 home Revit files 2 2. That looks like it should be the one. Looks like the one without the walls on it, so let me close that one out. This one didn't get finished. So we'll go ahead and open up uh, from class A. 101A Revit files. Get our 3D view. Yeah, now there's a little bit of a mistake on this one. If you look in the book on page, uh, uh, two dash twenty six, this wall here is actually supposed to be down to this level. So I made a bit of a mistake. I actually fixed it in class three. But if I go back to our uh, level uh, two floor plan. And what I want to do is take this wall, select it, and bring it back to this intersection. Why well, this is acting up on me, but there we go. Same thing here. Select this wall, bring it back till this intersection. And again, we're on level two. Just bring these back until they intersect. Now go down to level one. And we still have these gaps but instead of just dragging these out what we're going to do is create the wall again but we're going to change the top constraint so it just goes up to level two. And then we're just going to connect actually draw the wall and you'll see the difference this makes in the uh, Now let's go to our 3D view. Now you can see we've got these notches out. So this wall only goes up to the, the second level, not to the third level. So we took care of that little problem. Now we're back on track. I'm just going to do a file, save as, and uh, project. And I'm just going to put it in my home directory. Actually, I should probably save that one. So it's already fixed. But for what we're doing in the demonstration portion of this, I'm going to put it into my home directory. Save as project CIE 101 home, Revit files 2 2. I'll just overwrite that one. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to go back to level one on our floor plan. We've got our door here. 
and we've placed that in there. I don't know in the first group if I put that in, so let me just go back through that, placing the door. What we're going to do is go up here to our door menu, and you'll probably see a different door here, but just say load family, go down to doors, commercial, and you're going to use the top door, just hit open, and we want the 7 foot by 6 8 door. This is 7 feet wide, 6 foot 8 inches tall. Hit OK. Give it a second to load up. Now, it doesn't show anything until we're actually in the wall. So we're going to move this down, I think, 62 foot 2 inches. So I'm going to get this close to, there it is. There's the center. And just left click, and it places the door in there. If I wanted to swing it to the inside, I could click those arrows, but I want this to swing out because these are exit doors. And if we go back to our 3D ortho mode, or just our 3D mode, there we go, so we can see it. And we actually zoom into this so we can see the doors. If I actually change my um, resolution now to fine rather than coarse, you'll actually see the door handles and the lock set show up. And you can see on the inside, there'll be panic hardware. Don't know whether I can zoom around so we can see that, but yeah, you can see the panic hardware on the inside of the door now. So that'll show up in our elevations when we actually place this. Go back to our level one. So we've got our door on here, and now we're going to move forward. We're going to pick our window tool from the ribbon menu. And we're going to load a family of windows so yeah alphabetical we'll go down to windows and we want a let me see casement with trim that's what we're looking for and if we click this down now we can see we've got different sizes and what the book tells us on the next page is we want to select a 24 by 48 window right here and we're going to place this window six foot six inches from the front corner so from this corner over we're going over six foot six inches and I'm not sure of that yep from the inner left wall six foot six one more so we're going to place it right there, and I'm going to hit my arrows. We want to see the glass more out towards the outside of the wall, because this is where you've got your windowsill in here. And then just hit your escape key a couple times. I'm going to change this back to uh, fine, and uh, I think if if you're having some trouble on the view. I believe we have we can just go to thin lines so it shows up a little better so this under the view tab you can see thin lines thick lines change it to thin it just allows you to see things a little bit better now what we're going to do is we're going to select the array tool on item 20 on page 230 so go back to our architecture actually I got to go to the modify we're going to select array Give it a second. And we're going to select the midpoint of this window. Select the window so it highlights. Then select the array tool. There we go. So we're going to use enable group is turned on linear group and associates we want the number five here for the number of windows and we're going to go to the last point so if I come down here to the center point and just pull this down 49 feet 49 feet hit enter so that will place five windows equally spaced between 49 feet so we, all we have to do, if I wanted to change this and say I want to see six windows there, now there's six. Change it back to five. 
and there we go. It's your escape key twice. So now those are all spaced evenly. We go look at our ortho view, spin it around, there's our windows, and if we actually render this realistically, you'll probably be able to see inside the building because it's got glass in the windows themselves. Go back to our level one plan. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, make sure. I want you to check the distance. So you can use your measure tool and just check center point to center point, 12 foot 3. Hit escape. Just they just want you to verify that they're all spaced evenly, which which they should be. 12 foot 3. If I hit it right. Center point to center point. Well, just crooked. But they're all 12 foot 3 apart. Now we're going to select all of these uh, windows. And just select all of them. We're going to use our mirror tool. And uh, with draw axis, we want the one with the pencil on it. And I can just find the center point of my door location here. We have copy turned on, so if I just left click there, that'll copy my windows to the other side. Hit escape twice, and now when we go to 3D ortho, we've got those all set. So if we look at this in our level one view, we know that north is straight up. If I was looking at my 3D view from a top view, oops, top, there we go. I always get it backwards. There we go. That's our north view looking down on it in 3D. So we know that north is up here, so our south elevation. Actually, our north elevation would be looking north. So if I click this, I'm looking at the back of the building. If I click the south elevation, what I'm going to be seeing is the south side of the building. So we can see our windows and our doors and our floor lines. So we'll mess with this just a little bit in that if I select these lines, I just want to pull these out a little bit further. And you notice they all locked so that we can see them. So we can see a front ele elevation of our building, and we can see our, uh, we want our level 2 plan and our level 3 plan. Whoops, level 1. Now level 1 doesn't show that, but I can change the visibility. I think the extents, view range, if I edit this, top to level 3 and hit apply and OK. No clip. Hmm. I hit unlimited. Thought I wanted to be able to see those towers above, but uh, apparently it's not going to let me do that, or not from this section anyway. View range should be level three, level one. View depth unlimited. Apply. Okay. We'll just take that off. So anyway, we'll we'll figure this out a little later. I'm just going to move. If you just select these, I'm just going to take my move tool and just move these up a little closer. This back one will move that one up a little closer. Right. So 
So now we want to put some dimensions on this piece. So dimensioning is pretty easy with our annotation toolbar. So we'll use our align dimensions. Use the align dimension. We want to go from wall faces. So from this wall face to that wall face, it's going to be 125 feet. And before we put too many dimensions on here in this level, we notice this says 1 8 inch equals a foot. And it automatically adjusts our text sizes for that. So before we go too much further, let's take a look at our sheets. Down here are sheets. If I click on this, and I'm going to right click and say New Sheet. Now it doesn't have any, so I want to load. It has an old sheet on there, but uh, I guess we could use that one. But let's just load these up. If you go to your the end, you'll see title blocks. This is the same place your families are located. And um, we can use the, what they have, E1 30 by 42. Let's use D, 22 by 34. So just double click on that one. And then this is the one we're going to use. So just say OK. So that brings up a standard title block template. Now what I want you to do is I want you to edit this. So we just double click this thing. We can say it will automatically go into the edit mode. So we don't need Autodesk up here. We don't need to advertise for them. They get enough out of us. The stuff down here we can all leave it the same way as it is now. And if we do a up here and do a file save we can save it in our desktop under CIE 101 Home, Revit Files, and we'll just make it, we'll call it D22 by 34. A D is a D size sheet of paper, and I'll call it CIE 101 so I can identify it. And, uh, and now we can mess around with it a little bit. If you double click here, whoops, on the drawn by, get in there you can edit the label and say okay it's drawn by and you can put some sample text here that says uh, I'm not sure if we have a yeah we can say drawn by and you can put your name here and hit OK the rest of the stuff it should pick up by itself and you'll see that in a second uh, when we give it a name and let's put our logo up here on the top. So if I go to Insert, uh, Image, I can go to my desktop. And I saw a picture I'd saved there the other day, a few years back, my old hockey days, actually with my kid. So this comes up really big. Or kids, I should say. And I'll bring that right up there. Place it right in. Give it a little bit of a border. So that'll be my logo. I had hair back then. Okay. Now we'll do a file. Save. Now let's say load into project and close. So if we come down now to our sheets, there's 101 unnamed. Let's rename this one. We're going to call it Plan and Elevation. Well, hit OK. And then just double click on it. So there's our drawing. So let's take our floor plan one, level one, drag it and drop it. And it'll go right, let's put it down near the bottom. There's our floor plan. And let's take our south elevation right here, just left, drag and drop. And we'll place that right up above it. So there's a little 
trick. Oh, it didn't pull up our edit family. Why did it not do that? Let me, uh, let's go back to our, go back here. I'm going to take that sheet and I'm going to delete it. And we're going to go back here to sheets and hit for me here. Oh, still. All right. File. Close. No, I don't want to save you. There. Now we can go to Sheets. Right click. Say New Sheet. This time I'm going to load CIE 101. Open. Oh, cancel. Just that one's the one I wanted. It's the one I got there. That's the one I needed. So I don't know why it didn't stay there, but anyway, now we'll do back and do our floor plan level one. It's eighth inch scale. We'll pop it right about here. And we're going to grab our south elevation. Drive that right up on the top. Now if I select this again, I just say move. I can grab, I should be able to grab one of these corners here. Just wanted to line it up a little closer with this one. Maybe I can move this one easier. Oops, going the wrong way. We'll get it fairly close. So we get our top elevation. So if I select the whole thing, this little title on the bottom, I can pull it back, let it go, and then I can just grab this piece and reassign it to a different location. Same thing on the bottom. In order to shrink that line, you have to bring it back this way, let go of it, and then you can move it where you need to. You'll notice this south, ele south elevation number two says it's on sheet A102, which this is A102. Now I can change the name of that if I go to my sheets, and I'm going to right click and rename this A101. Let's call it A100. And this would be, as I did before, plan and elevation. Hit OK. So this changes over here. If I want to change the owner's name, we'll say UMain project name. We'll call it CIC. CIE 101. It automatically picked up the scale. I do have to change the author's name. The issue date didn't pick it up, so we we'll just say 3 26 16. We don't need a project number, so it automatically pulled up our scale. So now if we go back and can we dimension on this portion of it? If we annotate here and use our aligned dimensions, it doesn't let us put our dimensions on here. However, I'll zoom out here. We can just go back to our level one plan and we'll just finish putting our dimensions on here. Whoops, annotate. Using the align dimension. There's our 10 footer. Why oh, that one doesn't work? a couple times. Usually that one's good for just a linear dimension, but we'll keep going with the aligned. Oops, get that one. At this point, at this point, 
And we'll go from here all the way down. Move that back a little bit. So down here on the bottom, we want to go from this point to the center point of our windows. So it's six foot ten. Twelve foot three. We're still in wall faces. It works, I just have to, it only goes between faces, so it's. I'll just use the overall layer. And yeah, we'll finish putting our dimensions here. Picks it up, it's just hard to see when it. We know we got an 8-inch wall, so we'll just put a couple dimensions in here just for the heck of it. To this point, this point inside the wall, and then from this point, this point inside the wall. You also notice if you get dimensions that are a little tight, you can just select, hit escape a couple times, hit the dimension, you can actually grab it and pull it out so it uh, gives you a little line showing where the dimension needs to go to. So if we go back to our sheet view now, there's our dimensions showing up here. And we can do the same thing now with our south elevation. Go ahead and put some dimensions on here. Use the align tool from this point to the bottom of the window is 3 feet. From the bottom of the window to the top of the window. Pull that one out on this side. And here's one of those instances where it's maybe good to just pull that dimension out so it's easier to read. And we'll put our dimension center to center here. Of course, this would have a lot more detail on it. If we wanted to put a, a note on here in our annotation, um, there's keynotes. I don't want a spot elevation. Try that one. And I would have to do, I just wanted to put a note about the towers here, but that's not the one I want. No. I just want to tag it, but that's, no, that's not the one either. That sets my text. User keynote. Oh well, we'll find it later. I'll have it for you next week. I'll figure it out. I don't want to hold you up here. I'm probably looking right at it. Revision clouds. Room tags, keynotes.
Oh well, I'll find it. So anyway, we got our dimensions on here. We've got our elevations. So this would give us all our vertical dimensions that we need. Probably need a dimension to our center of our door, just the height of it maybe. Actually, it would be shown on the door schedule, so I'll just throw this dimension here, just to give it to the center point. So we've got some dimensions there. Now, we'll go look at our sheet plan view. Check this out. Now, this one just says level one. I want to rename that to ground floor plan. So I'm just going to go to here to level one and rename this ground floor plan and say, OK. Yes, and it automatically will rename. So if I click this piece, then I can extend this out a little further. And it puts the scale on here. Same up here on this one. You can see this one I'm interfering, so I can just pull that out of the way. And rather than south, I'm going to call it, rename it to south elevation. Hit OK. There we go. So you'll notice down here, A100 now, elevation 2 is here. This listed as elevation 2 on sheet A100. So it automatically uh, addresses those items. Everything else looks good down here. It actually picked up the date this time, plan and elevation. So now what we want to do is print this. And this will be our first assignment to turn in. So you're going to go up here to the big R. You're going to select print. And just select the, uh, let's do a print setup first. So we're going to call this one. I want to, it's not the printer I want. Let me just cancel this out. File, print. I want to change this to the cute PDF writer, which you should all have now at least. And say OK. And now we'll go to our print setup. There we go, cute. And we're going to give it a name. Just leave it as default, I guess, for now. And we need a piece of paper here. We said that was. Uh, how big was that paper? I've got to measure it, I guess. Architecture view. Measure right here. Two foot ten, so it's thirty four by twenty two. Write that down because I won't remember it. Thirty four by twenty two. This is the only time you'll have to do this, so yes, all I did was measure it. So now we'll go back here to our print and page print setup. We're going to change this now to a postscript custom page size. Automatically select. Well, it should uh, everything else is good here. Portrait. So now we'll go back here to print. See if it lets us change this thing. So we're going to go to properties. And paper and quality, advanced, we want edit custom page size. So the width of this is going to be 34. 
the height is going to be 22 inches. Long edge first. We're going to say OK. Uh, one copy. We'll say OK here. And layout portrait is good. Hit OK. We'll do a preview. Doesn't quite fit, but it could be my resolution. So I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I'll save it. I'll zoom in a little bit. See, sometimes you don't see all the lines. So let's go ahead and print this just for the heck of it and see what it looks like. So we'll say OK. And ask me where I want to put it. So I'm going to go to my desktop, CIE 101 Home, PDF, Exercise 2-2, and we'll hit Save. If I minimize that now and go to my CIE 101 Home, look in my PDFs, and there's Exercise 2-2. Yeah, you see, uh, the preview window wasn't very good, but the actual drawing itself looks pretty good. All the line weights are there. Everything fits. However, I don't know that it's to scale. So let's go back and check that. Um, close this out. Back to my Revit. Do a file. Print. Print setup. Uh, zoom. 100%. Make sure I've got this. Save as CIE 101 print 22 by 34. Okay. Hit OK again. Now we'll do another print. That's all good. Preview. See, it all went way out to the borders there now. So this will be the real test. Print. And OK. I'm going to send it right into the same place. Yes, overwrite it. We'll minimize it now. Go back to my home screen. PDFs. There we go. So if I was actually to print this out on a full sheet of 22 by 34 at full scale, I'd be able to lay an eighth inch equals a foot scale on this drawing, and these dimensions should be correct. So if we look in closely at these, and on that size paper, even though this text in the dimensions looks small, it would actually read pretty fairly large, like a tenth of an inch anyway. So it would be easily readable on the screen. You can also see on these casement windows, it gives us the swing of the window as it, as it goes out. So there's probably a way to flip that if we wanted the hinges on the other side. If I look down on this side, we'll probably see the angle the other way. So those casement windows, that's the point of the V is the hinge side. That's where they swing. Uh, so they'd be swinging out from this point. This would be the opening edge of the window, just like these doors show the hinge points. Um, now, one thing I, I didn't notice on here is I don't see the door handles. So let's go back out of this, take one more look at this piece, zoom in on it, and let's change, see if we can change the view resolution. I'm not sure. We can change that to Let me look at that south elevation. There it is here. Fine. Okay. I had to change it up here 
and we'll look at the ground floor plan that one's already fine so now if I go back to the sheet now we can see the door handles on here so again we'll print it one more time file print yeah preview if I hit properties here should be all set the way it was I haven't gotten out of it and There it is, my settings. CI 101 print 22 by 34, and there's my setup. Hit OK. Preview. Looks awful. Print. PDF. And OK. And same place. Yes. Again, it's not a very big file. Just open it up. And now we zoom in on our door, we can see our door handles. There they are. Okay, so when you're done, you're going to have an exercise 10, a place where you can put this um, drawing in Blackboard by Monday. and. Uh, and then on uh, Monday and Wednesday's labs, we'll be starting some new work. Uh, we're going to be moving into chapter, uh, the next chapter. Or actually, we're going to exercise 2-7, creating a conceptual mass, another little side project that we're going to work on. Um, and I'm not sure that that one moves in. There's some additional projects and some quizzes there. And then from there, the next project that we're going to do is actually starting our building that we're going to create. So I think that one continues through the rest of the book. So if you want to get ahead a little bit, you can kind of look ahead at those plans and we'll be doing those in class. I may end up doing a couple of these little conceptual models, um, but for now we'll just uh, plan on doing um, the rest of chapter two next week and maybe get into a little bit of chapter three to get started on this next one if we have time. So that is it for my online lab portion. Get this portion done, dump it in, you'll have a grade on it, and uh, we'll get started with some more stuff next week. Thanks.